study of complex systems is one of the major uh, problems that we deal with in this uh, department and that happens on the, the large scale of the cosmos, it happens on the scale of uh, nanomaterials, but it also happens on the scale of climate uh, systems and yeah, in particular in the physics of coastal systems. So that's actually my topic. So I'm interested in this complex dynamics and in particular in the spontaneous emergence of uh, phenomena like these ripples at the beach or the sand waves or you have even bigger uh, tidal sand ridges which have length scales of order of several kilometers. It's nice to look around you see the phenomena and realize, hey, I can say something about that. I understand the physics behind it. You have the tools at your disposal to, to go into that problem and, and try to solve it. And that is what I like a lot. I was always fascinated by, uh, by water, or fluids in general. And particularly by their very different behavior they, these fluids can exhibit. The climate system mainly consists of fluid, at, at least the, the physical part of the climate system. Uh, on one hand, it is, it is very challenging, and on the other hand, it's also very relevant, because it's really the real world that is around us. On, on the one hand, there is a lot of things to discover, and on the other hand, it seems possible. I think the, the combination of these two facts leads to quite some enthusiasm that you think, oh yeah, we, we really can, we can make progress in the near future in, in, in these kind of things. What kind of behavior do we have in biological systems, for instance? In a biological system, we have dead objects that just kind of move around because of their environment. But we also have active particles, which are basically particles which take in energy from their environment and as a result move. And one of the things that the colloidal world is very interested in at the moment is understanding and being able to basically make synthetic analogs to these systems. So can we make in the lab systems which, like biological systems, also take in energy and as a result move? We know that biology can do amazing things because of the connections of passive elements with active elements. If we ever want to be able to do the same thing on kind of a nano, yeah, on a nano or colloidal scale and design materials, we also want to be able to control the behavior of these active components. I like it very much, yeah. I find it exciting. One of the beauties of complexity or complexity in physics is that you still can come with simple, tractable, uh, short descriptions of a phenomena, a, for example, a collective phenomena that applies to many, many scales. Because complexity is everywhere, the phenomena are, are so general, you can always find a new phenomena which nobody has explained before. And that I found very fascinating, that you start from a daily observation that you can observe or you can show to everybody. Uh, and then when you study deeply, you can explain it in a fashion that you can make predictions about other complex systems, or you can make connections with other systems. You know, you study new phenomena, you find out, oh, this has certain properties, and then, and then you find out there is this universal behavior of several different models which all fit into one class. By connect, making this connection, I suddenly boost my understanding of this phenomena which I have observed for the first time, and uh, so I connect with a bigger uh, good. That, that I found very fascinating. What I like very much is that you can work on phenomena that you see when you look around you. What I often tell to students is that choose a topic work on it for one or two years, and you are the specialist. You work at the front of the field because there's still so much to discover.